Now, Morag Sangster's day job is a tattoo artist, but her passion is rescuing food animals, as she calls them, from your table. Uh, over the past two years, she and her husband have taken in more than 100 pigs, turkeys, cows, sheep, chickens, donkeys, goats and geese, which would have otherwise ended up in the slaughterhouse. Uh, Morag's animal sanctuary caught the eye of filmmaker Vivian Masters, and now the story is out there for everyone to, to see. They both join me now at Morag Sangster, co-founder of the Tribe Animal Sanctuary. Sanctuary Scotland. Morning, Morag. Good morning. Good morning. And filmmaker Vivienne Masters. Hi, Vivienne. Hi there. Hi. Good morning. Um, morning. So, so, Morag, you've been a tattoo artist with um, a, a couple of tattoo parlours, um, one in Edinburgh, one in uh, Glasgow, for, for many years. Um, what made you think that you wanted to set up an animal sanctuary? That idea came before the tattoo studios. It's been with me for a long time. Oh, it's wow. Just, um, yes, it's, it's been on the horizon for a long time. Right, OK. So this is something that you have always wanted to do, but the opportunity or the time wasn't right. Um, so what brought it to fruition then? Um, I just felt that the time was right. I think social media is great at the moment. Um, and I could afford it. I didn't want to jump in without some financial backing. And it just all came together at the right time. And I told my husband, right, we're doing it. <laughs> you told your husband, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and what was his reaction when you told him, Morag? Well, he tried to talk me out of it for a little bit, just because it's a kind of quite overwhelming undertaking. But now he's completely on board. Yeah. So, so why was it such a burning um, ambition for you, Morag? I've been a vegetarian since I was 13 and then in my 20s I turned vegan so I've been wanting to do something more for the animals all these times but I just, you know, life life happens and you need to get on with it but uh, I've always wanted to actually rescue animals and it, from going from being just a theoretical and ethical decision to being something that I can practically do as well. And so how do you in practice rescue animals? I mean, what, what's the setup that you have? Well, we took over an old equestrian property, so we've got stables in the barn and we've got paddocks and we just started taking in the animals and sitting them in where, where they wanted to be and what worked out for us. And so it's kind of an evolving situation. Um, the animals arrive, we find them somewhere, we figure out what they need and then we, we work around it. And, and how do you get the animals? Do they come to you? Do you go and seek them out? That's a good question. It's... Um, the animals that we're interested in are, like you say, considered like food animals or they're not pets. And that's exactly the kind of bit that we're interested in, this difference between pet and um, commodity. So the animals that we get usually fall in between that category and somehow ended up maybe as a beloved companion animal rather than a commodity, like somebody maybe bottle fed a lamb and then couldn't face sending it to slaughter or somebody took in a pig as, you know, as a pet and then it, it outgrew its original, you know, yeah, home the household, and needed... Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, you know about the kind of micro-pig craze. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. become macro-pigs, yes. <laughs> they become pigs. No such thing, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole different uh, chapter, yes. So, but, you know, or older people have pet sheep and then, you know, their health fails or their situation changes and they can't look after them anymore. And that's where we can get these animals and, you know, provide a, a loving home for them and, and until the end of their days. So what animals do you have? Well, um, most of our animals are sheep. We're in Scotland, so, you know, there's a lot of sheep going about. Um, we also have highland cows, donkeys, goats, pigs, hens, turkeys, geese. hope I haven't forgotten anyone. Cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I mean, th this must be an expensive undertaking, apart from anything else, more. How, how do you finance it? The tattoo studios finance it. So um, the tattoo studios have become a uh, not-for-profit, so everyone gets paid and the bills and everything gets paid, and anything left over is what's paying for the animals. Right. Well, I can now see why, Vivienne, you were so interested in making a film about it. It's an incredible story. Um, exactly. How did, you, how did you come across Morag and the Sangari? Yeah, um, 
basically I found them online and then I went to visit them about three years ago. Um, I think they'd only just started uh, up then. And uh, yeah, I quickly realized, you know, what an amazing place this was um, because not only do they have all these animals, they also educate people as well. So when people come along to their um, sanctuary, you know, they have questions and uh, they, they do their very best to educate people so that they can, you know, learn um, about where their food comes from, uh, basically. Um, and yeah, as you can tell, there's a lot of, uh, it's a great story. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it kind of started yeah so what do you see then through your filmmaker's eyes um of of the sanctuary and and morag and and, and her husband um, who's going along with it and happy with it with it now um because morag will probably have a different perspective yeah um I, I, the film is only five minutes but you could make it into a whole series you know because all the animals have individual personalities within themselves um uh, they have um, a pig called Francisco, right. who, when I first went to the sanctuary, was only a little tiny pig. And now, he's a huge pig. <laughs> um, but he, he shares the bed with the dogs inside the house. Um, he roams free. He goes about his day. I mean, you can make a film just based on, on Francisco, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, there's just from my perspective, I just wanted um, Morag to have a voice, Morag and John to have a voice. Um, basically, and I just thought a film would be a really great way to, to show, um, you know, people about their sanctuary. And um, they also do uh, Sunday visits, not currently, but they do Sunday visits where people can come along um, and meet the animals and chat to Mor Morag and John. And, uh, yeah, if, you, if no one's ever been to a sanctuary before, just, you know, they, they're a great, uh, a great place to go and visit. I mean, Morag, it really sounds that you're, you're kind of sharing your lives with these animals. That's that's exactly what we're doing. These are our extended family now. And um, as Vivian said, we like to have people visit. Um, we don't charge for this. It's just it's about people making the connection when they meet these animals that they wouldn't normally meet and that they can see that they're just as, you know, characterful and funny, as Vivian says, as your cat or dog would be, so that people can see that this strange distinction between commodity and pet animals that we culturally have is is really a kind of a wobbly construct. And once you get to meet these animals, it's hard to kind of make that distinction mm. between, you know, pet and commodity. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to help people make that connection. So we do a lot of work online and Vivian's film has been great for that, especially during lockdown when we couldn't have any visitors to share our um, you know, love with um, the the film and work on social media has been kind of what's been keeping us going in that in that kind of campaigning respect. Mm -hmm. And we've heard about Francisco the pig, but do, do all the animals have names? All of them, every sheep, <laughs> every one. Do you know them all? Every, do they yes, know they you? Do, yes, they do. Oh, the 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 face face recognition in that sheep have is phenomenal. Apparently, is it? Yeah, it's fine. They can tell if you're happy or sad or, you know, they, they know if you've got a syringe behind your back. They can tell. So, well, we're kind of short of time, but tell me some yeah. stuff that I wouldn't know about what we would normally regard as farm animals and, and, and see them as that. And as you say, probably commodities. Pigs especially. Um, they usually, you know, they're usually behind closed doors. You don't really get to meet a pig face to face. Um, mm -hmm. Often, so that's the biggest surprise that people have when they come here. That the pigs are really characterful, especially you know, it's easy to see like Francisco the house pig or pog as we call him because he thinks he's a dog, and how he behaves, how easy it was to house train him, um, how you know, how well he fits in with the indoor animals, and just how funny and lazy and you know yeah. greedy and all these all these funny things are you wouldn't normally find out that pigs are like that unless you put them in this situation like we have ours and let people meet them yeah absolutely gosh well you, you've definitely wet my appetite there where can we see the film vivian 
Yeah, you can see it um, a lot of places on Tribe Animal Sanctuary Facebook uh, group, um, also on their Instagram, on my Instagram, uh, Vivian Esther Masters, and also my YouTube uh, channel, Vivian Masters. I think it's on Tribe a bit more, I guess, on the Tribe YouTube channel as well. Um, um, yes, I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we will meet Francisco the Pog um, yeah. <laughs> and many other charming animals as well, as, as well as you, Mark Morag, and, and your husband. Um, yeah. Well, listen, Thank you very much for, for telling us about it. It's uh, it's fascinating <laughs> stuff. And I'm, I'm just wondering, I'm sure there'll be people out there who have got, uh, I've got to be careful of the word pet, because do you use the word pet, Morag, or not? We don't. You don't. Companions or just Companions. Dog, every, every annual is an animal for so okay. its own right. All right. I'm sure there will be people out there who have animal companions who don't fit into yeah. the normal kind of domestic pet kind of range. Uh, so if you do, uh, tell us all about them. 80295. Um, Morag and Vivian, thank you very much indeed. Ian and Partick says, Morag and the team at Tribe are brilliant tattoo artists with hearts of gold. As a vegan myself, I specifically chose them for my tattoo because my inking would control